So guys, all the things that we do is trying to support you in your overall progress. We know it's, it's hard right now, um, but I don't like to promote what I went through and the places I had to go to because of the choices I made in my life. But remember, I was locked down in a prison cell and I wanted to be good so bad. I wanted out. I was so apologetic. I mean, I never ever wish that on anyone, but because of the choices I made, I was in a place locked down, told when to get up, when to go to sleep, what to do. And I couldn't think about tomorrow. I couldn't think about yesterday. I couldn't think about nothing. The only thing I could think about is just trying to make it through that second of the day because it could have cost me my life. I'm not trying to frighten anyone, but that was it. That was, that's all I had, you know, and I never want to wish that on anyone, but I had to, and I was claustrophobic, you know, so that means I could not, uh, you know, really deal with close in situations. I would panic, you know, cause as a little kid, my head had got caught up under uh, a bathtub in the old days they had them low them them real thick bathtubs so you squeeze your head up in there as a kid they weren't concerned about safety back then it was just building boom and my parents you know got me out and they just haunted me for all my life so when i got locked up and i was in that prison cell when i prayed to god and I asked god to forgive me to please give me another chance i had to work through everything nobody there helped me you're talking about fearful times now that was fearful because you've seen people losing their lives. You heard about all these horror stories about what happened to people when they go to prison. And I was in a maximum security prison. So I just made that commitment. I mean, I just made a commitment that I wanted more. I had to figure out how not to let my, you know, my weakness take, you know, take control of me. So I began to get up and I began to work out. I began to find a way to practice my punches in the air like you guys are doing now. Practice my calisthenics. You nobody was there to coach me. Nobody was there to help me. And remember, guys, I was coming back from some bad, devastating things that was in my body. I was homeless. Everything was against me. But I took that moment and I truly made a commitment and I wanted to be better. I wanted a better life. I wanted to break a cycle. And I did just that by getting up every day earlier than everyone else, meditating, praying. There was no structure. There was no certainty of what, what I could do. I had to figure it out all on my own, just like everybody got to do right now. But I got in there and I committed myself. I did those punches, those kicks. I practiced my cutters. I create things. Remember, you got to remember one thing too. Everything I did was based upon my creative, natural expression. And when I came home from um, being incarcerated, the cutters that I did were cutters that I made up based upon my natural ability. During that time, what it forced me to do is to grab a hold of something that made me safe and made me feel comfortable. Even though when I went into that situation, it was so uncomfortable, I made uncomfortable comfortable. Why? Because I, I, I had to make the best of my time. I had to learn how to appreciate everything. I wrote down things. When things came to my mind, I wrote them down. I just stayed focused on the plan at hand. We, right, like right now, people can get up and regardless of what's going on, you can go out your door. You know, you can go talk to somebody. You can go to your refrigerator, eat some ice cream. You know, you can call somebody on your phone. You know, you can, you can vent. You know, you can take it out on other people. You can get mad and scream and do all the things you want to do. You know, you can fall down and get back up. When you're in jail, you can't do none of that. You're in that cell. You could be having a heart attack and you can yell and scream for the CO and they just probably say, shut up. They come and they come and look at you when they ready to look at you. You can't afford to like look at someone wrong. You can't afford to walk, wake up and have negative body language. You can't afford to walk around and, and take your, your, your pressures out on other people. We seen a movie the other day is, I mean, every, every adult need to see it about Russell Crowe. I mean, it's, oh, it's an incredible movie about just the anger and the frustration that people have today. Well, that's jail, but imagine that triple. That's what it is. You can get, you, your life can be done just like that. That's why I worked so hard because there was no guarantee that I would wake up tomorrow. Nobody didn't was giving me money. Nobody was going to give me a place to stay when I came home. It's like right now, I had to make the best of that moment. So I had to work out. I had to create a plan. I had to write my goals. I had to make sure I dealt with a structured way of living. Every day I woke up, I learned to self-care. That was the first time I learned to love myself. That was the first time I learned to take care of myself. And I did all those things. I stayed away from negative things. I could not allow my mind to, to focus on the negative consequences. Come on. 
When you come home and you come out of a situation like that, you're not guaranteed a job. You're not guaranteed anything. The only guarantees that you have is the guarantees you can place on yourself. And that, that, that placing on yourself is really having faith in God and believing in the unseen. Believing that you can make nothing into something. And I came home with nothing. I'm saying nothing. I am grateful for every little bit of thing I have today. So you can make it through this. You can make it through this. People are telling you. People are trying to help you. I'm not saying everybody's heart is always good, but it's, it's enough help there. When you locked up, you're not getting no help. If you ain't helping yourself, you can forget it. If you ain't giving self-care to yourself, you can forget it. When they talk about playing for the worst, yeah, that's what you did. If you knew you had to go to court, you ain't worried about going home. Somebody said, yo, you going home? Nah, I ain't going home, man. Forget that, yo. I'm going to go to this court and I see whatever happened, man. I'll be back here, bro. You know what I'm saying? If it happened, it happened. You could not get caught up into what you thought was going to happen or what somebody said they was going to do for you. It didn't happen. Many people think they can relate and they, they try to talk to me. Like, yeah, I feel you. No, because I didn't feel me. I didn't understand it. I had to make myself, I had to make myself get up and surrender every day to win. Because just for that day, there was no guarantee that I was going to live the next day. When I, come on, think about it. When I say I went to jail and I, I was so uncomfortable, I had to over, I had to get so much bad stuff out my system. I had to, I had to do it by myself. Nobody was there to help me. I had no one but me and God. I couldn't afford to make a friend. I had to figure out how to do it all by myself. I had to find self-love. And when your spirit is right, when your commitment is there, everybody can feel that vibration. That's why I never got in a fight. That's how, why I was able to make amends. That's why if I made a mistake, I lift myself back up. I couldn't afford to. I couldn't afford to talk negative to myself. That was suicide. I could not. I could not. I had to stay focused. When I was released, I was afraid to come out that prison. But I came out and I did whatever I can do to, to find a way to, to make it work with $20 in the dream. And now I'm here today, and still today, I cannot allow myself because of how bad things are. It's nothing compared to my best day back then. I say that to myself. I'm not saying it to nobody else. I got to remember what it was like eating out of the trash cans. I got to remember what it was like when I had to find a way to lift myself up. I got to remember what it's like when I had to walk out there and find a way to, to, to honestly make it to a tournament, to honestly, you know, write articles and send to a magazine. I had to believe that I had enough confidence and enough faith and belief in God that the school that we run today started with $20 in the dream. I am so thankful. I am grateful. So don't you quit. Now is the time to tap into your creative expression that God has gifted us with. Trust the faith. Trust yourself. Have trust in God. Knowing that God only puts on you what you can bear. I'm not preaching religion. I'm just telling the truth. After 33 years, I've been able to do that. As a kid, I realized that this is what I always did as a kid to express myself. So right now, take your time. Give it your best, man. No one knows what to do. Nobody can guarantee what's going to happen. Everybody's trying to stumble to figure out what's going on. Guess what? That's how it is in prison. When you get locked up, ain't no guarantees. It's a whole nother world. Nobody wants to go there. That's the last thing I would hope on anyone. But I found a way to adapt. I found a way to flow in harmony with the universe. And that's how Wushudo came about. Because I realized I became one with my environment. And when I became one with my environment, I've been able to change my life by the, by the grace of God and be clean and sober for more than 33 years and achieve goals that I never thought possible. And I have to continue to surrender every day to know that God is going to guide me and my family and everyone out there to a better way. So let go. Trust in God. Have faith. Faith is believing in the unseen. You can't touch it. You can't see it, but you know it exists. My life is a living example that 